Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Slay the Princess. And if you've never seen this game before, Slay the Princess is a horror game where you've been tasked to slay a princess, or the world will end. Now on that note, I played the previous demo of this game, this is the new one. There's a whole bunch of new endings, there's some big changes to Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. But, if you haven't seen the previous video, you can't tell if you just watch this one, this video will be kind of standalone. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, this video is going to be kind of standalone. I am going to go through each route from the beginning. I'm not just going to skip to the new content. Because I did do changes in Chapter 1, it looks like. And a lot of these endings don't make any sense about that context. We will be skipping a lot of these filler questions and answers. That's all in the original playthrough if you want to see them. Okay. Thanks for tell me what to do. Don't mention it. It's all part of the job. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, ignore the hero, the main character. Proceeding to the cabin. So if you skip straight to this video... The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. I will say that the, the format of this game is essentially choices do matter. Your choices kind of shape what the princess may or may not be and the way the narrator relates to you. And even your own actual voice in relation to the story. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. Enter the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? It's me, mainly badass hero. She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Hi, just checking on you. Hey, I think I'm here to kill you. Just checking on you. Oh, it's been so long since anyone's come down here. I was starting to think they'd forgotten about me. No, it's how the cursor changes to a knife. And lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? Mm, not this time? Well, no way. Why would you even think that? What? No way. Why would you even think that? That giant knife you're holding kind of gives it away, doesn't it? This is my uh, fruit carving knife. The blade. Of course she doesn't want to talk. Who'd want to have a conversation at knife point? We should drop it. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. Killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. Drop it. The 
the blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clang. Thank you. Maybe now we can just... talk. Against your better judgement, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face, unarmed. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. <sighs> Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. No, I think this is a good one. Yeah, it's pretty awkward. Your relationship, are you coming on to me? This one here. Don't jump to any weird conclusions. We're two people who have met each other. By definition, we have a relationship. Damn. How would I get you out of here? You can't. Don't bother. I'm guessing you don't have the key then. I'm sure there's a key somewhere around here, and if there isn't... Well, we can always put that knife to good use. No, not that one. Her sharp eyes settle on the edge of the blade. She isn't suggesting what I think she's suggesting, right? She is. I'm sure of it. I'm... Because I'm here, gonna end the world. How long have you been down here? Okay, we've talked enough. Oh, have you decided what to do with me? You know why you're here. Slay the princess, title drop. I'm getting you out of here, examine the chains. Oh, you have to be kidding me. Nope. Waifu. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. If you don't have the key, maybe you should go looking for it. I'm sure it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. If there isn't a key, do you have any ideas besides me cutting you out of here? I'm gonna check upstairs. Maybe the key's still lying around somewhere up there. If not, maybe I could at least find you something to break you free. I'll be here. Yes, you will. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Explore, hey, let me out here. Explore, try the door. You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. Hey, let me out of here. Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. I'll repeat myself once again. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. Return to the bottom of the stairs. You make your way back to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd simply slain her like you were supposed to. No, I'm the spirit of rebellion. Can't listen to you. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. Save the princess. Against your better judgement, you place the blade against the princess's arm, just above the massive, unyielding chain. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and you make quick work of it. Before long, you're able to crack through bone, and she pulls the bleeding stub of her arm through the iron gauntlet. She didn't so much as utter a sound. Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you. A fierce gaze meeting your eye. How is she so composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. 
Approach the locked door. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I just can't let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. No. You bring the blade down and plunge it into the princess's back. Finally. Okay. There's no going back now. Though the blade left a deep gash in her shoulder, she barely so much as flinches turning around to stare at you incredulously. Are you serious? Apparently. I don't know what came over you, but if we're doing this, I guess I'll have to kill you. Do you think I need both of my arms to do that? I can beat you to death with one. But I don't have to tell you that. I'll go ahead and show you. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Do you see that razor sharpness in her gaze? I don't think she's bluffing. Give up. As the blade falls from your trembling hands, the princess rears back, readying a bone-shattering haymaker. You fall to your knees, barely able to process the ringing in your ears before she hits you again. Every blow is as punishing as the first. You feel bones shatter with every impact, unknown ruptures blossoming with blood somewhere inside of you. If we're lucky, the wound you manage to inflict will be enough to at least delay her escape from this place. If we're very lucky, we'll kill her before she gets out. Oh, too weak to even try fighting back. How disappointing. She places a confident heel on your chest and pushes you down to the ground. Her knee falls to your throat, your windpipe crushed beneath a weight you didn't think her slight form could possibly possess. It can't just end like this, right? It can. I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 2. The Tower You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path, is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. So in the tower route, the big thing in that one was that you essentially lost to her. She seems like overpowering. Like she's very tough. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Okay, terrible sense of deja vu. She's gonna kill me again. Again? People don't die twice. You haven't even met the princess, and I hardly think she'd be capable of killing someone as skilled and courageous as yourself. Oh no, she can kill me. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. What does it matter what he knows? There's nothing we can do to stop her. She's just going to kill us again. She is not going to kill you unless you let her. But slaying the princess and saving the world is going to be much more difficult than it has to be if you spend the whole time second-guessing yourself. Assume we're telling the truth. All this really did happen. Why don't you have to listen to you? Why should I bother doing anything? Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or, or at least a version of me. You died last time, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. Of course we died. She didn't feel pain. Voice of the broken. She didn't feel much of anything, did she? And she broke every bone in our body before she decided to let us die. What were we supposed to do to stop her then? What are we supposed to do to stop her now? It's pointless. She's just a princess. Slaying her shouldn't have been difficult, but congratulations. You've been given another chance to actually do this right. Yeah, so this one's kind of like based off of fear. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, Oh, what's the point of doing anything? 
If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. The princess killed us and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything, just like I told you she would? I feel like you're the one that brings the end to everything, narrator. If she ended the entire world, why should we even bother? We might as well just walk up to that cabin, break her chains, and let her do whatever she wants. It's all the same in the end. Just because she's capable of ending the world doesn't mean you're not capable of slaying her. Both of those things can be true at the same time. So chin up. I believe in you. In some ways, I feel like the ending of the world thing might be about the narrative aspect of like ending the quest. Let's talk about this princess. Um, proceed to the cabin. Oh, Running away his own rending route. Before you go any further, she will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We might as well just pledge ourselves to her. Nice. And stop pretending we're capable of doing anything in this situation. She probably doesn't even need to try to overpower us. Can we tone down the pessimism just a smidge? I'm not being a pessimist. I'm just being realistic. Voice of the Broken also has a certain very specific kink, I think. You're being annoying. Nope, narrator doesn't have a voice here. Whatever you do, don't pledge yourself to her. I cannot stress enough how absolutely catastrophic that would be for everyone. Yourself included. I agree. If she's wrongfully imprisoned, then we should rescue her, but if he's telling the truth, we shouldn't just hand her the world on a silver platter. Rescue her? Given the stakes of the situation, there isn't really a difference between rescuing her and pledging yourself to her. Either would be terrible. I actually kind of paid attention to what people who were, you know, responding to this game, how they were, like, talking, and actually there was a lot of people who would pledge themselves to her in that way, if you know what I mean. So please, try to ignore both of those knuckleheads and focus on saving the world. Let's not make this harder than it has to be. Proceeding to the cabin. If that's what you want, I guess I don't have a say here. The interior Whoa. of the cabin is larger and more grandiose than its humble exterior would suggest. The only furniture of note is a massive marble altar with a pristine blade perched on its edge. Why is it so high? The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Why do we feel so... small? We don't feel small. We are small. You didn't see anything but the mirror on the wall. This whole cabin's different than last time. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's the altar, the blade sitting on the altar. There's a mirror right the there. Altar, the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. D are you trying to gaslight me? Who cares if there's a mirror? We're all going to die anyway. And I'm sure that if we looked in there, we'd just see something sad and miserable looking back at us. We don't need any reminders of what we are. It would only make things worse. <sighs> for the last time, you're not going to die unless you let it happen. And luckily for you, there isn't a mirror, so no one needs to worry about confronting a grisly visage any time in the near future. Considering it looks like my build is like a goblin, I think this is true. Though, for what it's worth, if there were a mirror, I'm sure that you wouldn't find anything sad or miserable in it looking back at you. You probably look perfectly normal. Like a perfectly normal goblin. Probably. Do you not know what we look like? He knows. He just doesn't have the heart to tell us. Yes. I want to look at myself. I want to see how handsome I am. Please don't. I'd rather the princess kill us again than see how dreadful we are. 
I care less about what we look like and more about whether we're being lied to. If he's willing to lie about something as innocuous as a mirror, what else is he hiding from us? Everything. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes, there is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would it even do? Approach the mirror. This whole cabin's different than last time. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. There's literally a mirror in front of me. You just can't... Are, are you like a, a deep follower of that one song? Or it's like, it wasn't me. This really isn't funny. See you staring at the mirror? It wasn't me. There ain't no mirror there. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach oh God. forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. My theory, I had a theory about this actually, is that we might be an almagation of basically monsters. Like goblins, dragons, fish people. Because at one point, I think she mentions we have gills. And I think it's... We should count I think it's a perspective lucky. thing. Some things are better left unseen. So we see her as monstrous, and she sees us as monstrous, because we're both in an antagonistic spot to the other. Um, take the blade, I guess. You take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Enter the basement. The door to the basement oh, creeps open, stairs. revealing a spiral staircase. It steps almost as deep as you are tall. The smell of incense drifts up from below. For a moment, you almost feel at ease. Huh. This is actually kind of nice. It's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her booming voice rolls up the stairs. Is that a guest I hear? Don't linger on the stairs. Come down and witness me. Nice. You weren't kidding when you said it was booming. She wasn't like this last time. No, it's an improvement. We need to get down there. She wants us to see her. We need to see her. Should we be worried about your sudden change in attitude? Just a few minutes ago, you were going on about how pointless everything was. Now you want to go down there. It doesn't matter what that little voice says. He's not the one making the decisions. Though if his ramblings get you to the princess, they get you to the princess. Continue down the stairs. Making your way down the spiral staircase is a time-consuming and exhausting effort, every step requiring you to clamber over one edge before dropping to the next. But soon the end comes into view, and you tumble to the bottom, entering the vast, temple-like room beyond. The princess Whoa. towers over you, almost glowing in the weak starlight, her figure framed by a stained glass window. Her long hair billows around her, and a chain binds her wrist to the far wall. That isn't what she looked like last time. Big. The chain is nothing to her. It might as well be a toy for all the good it would do. I told you it was pointless to This is what the sprout's called the tower. The little bird has returned to me. I wonder what he wants. Everything. You've brought that knife again. Even though you know it's useless. Such charming audacity. Drop it! Tighten your grip. Wait, quick save. As if on command, the blade Never slips mind. from your grasp. It clatters uselessly to the floor. But we didn't drop it. We decided to grip it tighter, remember? Are you really just gonna let that happen to us? Apparently. I have a duty to report facts as facts, and the fact is that you dropped the blade. Of course we dropped it. She's so much more than us. You wouldn't understand what it feels like to be in her presence. Oh, I understand what's going on, and you'd better snap yourself out of it. Neil. Yes. No. Oh, are you still trying to defy me? I 
said, Kneel! Oof. Your legs buckle, and your knees hit the floor. That's my good little bird. Now, why don't we talk? The Tower. This is like a little like intro to be continued. Okay, so I see I see kind of what's uh, going on. Thank you playing. There's ten routes and one ending to find in the demo, and many more ways to die. So we're gonna go for the river ones. No blade this time. Yeah, maybe she'll be more receptive if we're unarmed. No, she won't. Blade, no blade. It doesn't matter. The little bird has returned to me. I wonder what he wants. I see your hands are empty. You've already given up, haven't you? You aren't even going to try and kill me. How sweet. Yeah, we're getting married instead. And more than a little disappointing. Damn. She's disappointed in us? Neil. Okay, so we're, let's go down, um... One of my favorite routes from last time. The, uh... The one where we just ignore the narrator. Turn around and leave. Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? Yep. I definitely know where I'm going. Somehow I doubt that, but fine. I suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Good. What we're being asked to do here is wrong. Better to wash our hands of this whole situation than to take part in it. Ignore that annoying little voice. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That's strange. It looks like this path also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. Nope, not worth saving. Leave again. You're really keen on wasting everyone's time, aren't you? It's remarkably selfish, if you ask me. I've already outlined the stakes of the situation. If you don't do your job, everyone dies. Like, dies, dies. Forever. Fine with me. Good, maybe everyone should die. It gets, gets what they get for dumbing me in the woods and asking me to kill someone for them. When I said everyone, I meant everyone. That's a pretty large group to just condemn to death over a single princess. And, last I checked, you're part of everyone too. So if you think about it, walking up to that cabin and slaying her is really in your best interests as well. But fine, you turn around and trek back down the path you came. Yep. Oh, would you look at that? You're at the cabin again. Now, I'm not normally one for superstition or astrology, but I have to say, it seems like the universe itself is doing its best to bring you to your fated confrontation with the princess. There's no funny this is there. Oh yeah? Well, I guess I start walking a different direction. Again, in fact, I'm going to just keep trekking for the wilderness until I find a way out of this place. There's always a choice. Let me tell you right now that you're making the wrong one for pretty much everyone who has ever lived, as well as for everyone who ever will. And that's a good thing. And here we go. As you trudge into the woods, something strange starts to happen. The house starts following me. At first, it's little flickers out of the corner of your eyes. Glimpses of familiar wooden structures through the leaves. But as you focus on your surroundings, you start to realize that those flickers weren't just a trick of light. In every direction, there is a path and a cabin. And not just a cabin, the cabin. An infinite fractal of paths and cabins desperately trying to draw you back to where you need to be. Wait, what's going on? But you're too stubborn for that, aren't you? It doesn't matter how many paths or cabins appear around you, you're just going to do whatever you can to shirk your responsibility because you care more about irritating me than you do about the fate of the world. You've doomed us all, you know that, right? But of course you do. Otherwise you wouldn't just wander off into the forest in search of certain death. You lose track of just how long you spend aimlessly tromping through the wilderness, but it's not like any of that time spent lost in the woods really matters, because it isn't long before the world ends and everyone dies. And that's a good thing. 
the part of the storyline makes you definitely makes me think of like a Twilight Zone episode, right? Like it's got that vibe, especially with all the, like the houses appearing everywhere. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Terrible sense of deja vu. Those walls weren't here last time. You can't just want to go to a cabin. What are you talking about? I'm sure those walls have always been there. It makes sense if you think about it. If there weren't any walls in the woods, someone might have gotten lost. Or, heaven forbid, someone other than you might have stumbled onto the princess. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. I don't know. I think it's more fun if he knows what we're thinking. He's like a captive audience. The voice of the contrarian. He might have walled off everything but the path to the cabin, but I'm sure there's plenty of other ways we can ruin his day. Yeah, like drinking his coke. If by ruining my day, you mean ruining everyone's day forever, then yes, I suppose there are plenty of ways you could pull that off. The world really did end last time, didn't it? We should be careful. For all we know, we just got lucky. The world hasn't ended yet. And you are never going to slay her with that attitude. Stuff those pathetic little voices to the back of your mind and stay focused on the task ahead. Suddenly proceed to the cabin. Lie. Yep, okay, I'm heading to the cabin now where I'm definitely going to slay that princess. You know I can tell when you're lying, right? Please take this seriously. I am begging you. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. If we're stuck going in there, maybe we should believe her. Maybe she isn't a liar. She probably isn't. Ignore him. He's just being difficult for the sake of it. Let's keep an open mind. Proceeding to the cabin. The interior of the cabin is odd. The air smelling faintly of plastic, the wood of the walls fitting together at uncomfortable angles. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table, its legs all the wrong lengths. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. I like how like, the art's off. The blade like the is budget your ran out. You'll need it if you want to do this right. If he wants us to take it, Maybe we should just leave it to collect dust, or better yet, grab it and throw it out the window. What good is a knife against a world-ending monstrosity anyway? I for one would rather have it. We don't really know what we're dealing with here. I've already told you what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a princess. How many times do I have to explain this incredibly simple and straightforward premise? Maybe we're in an alternate universe where princesses suck. There's the mirror. Um, I'm kind of curious how much different our dialogue is in the mirror part here. We should look at ourselves. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, look, the contrarian comments a little different on. You won't be looking at yourself because there isn't a mirror. There's the table, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. You insisting it isn't there just makes me want to look at it even more. Why would you lie about that? What's the point? Exactly. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago, and now it's gone. You know that taking the mirror away from us isn't going to change things, right? We'll find it again, and then we'll see whatever it is that you don't want us to see. The voice of the contrarian is actually how the actual player base is like. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Okay, fine, you took the knife. But you really shouldn't hold it like that. Then how are we supposed to hold it? The other way, thumb at the bottom, will look much cooler and more serious if we hold it with our thumb at the bottom. 
It really doesn't matter how you hold the blade, as long as you have it. Just make a choice. Hold the blade the other way. You switch your grip on the blade. Nice! Look, as you switch. Yes! Isn't this so much better? Da, 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 da. <sighs> okay, fine. You're right. This does look a lot better. It really doesn't matter. Just get on with it and deal with the princess already. <laughs> we can throw the blade out the window. <laughs> yes, do it. Yes. Seriously. You throw the blade at the window, the glass shattering as it flies out into the night. I suppose you'll just have to deal with the princess without a weapon. Can't believe you actually did it. We'll be fine. Don't worry about it. What's the worst that could happen? The world ends. Oh well. If the princess wasn't going to do it, the heat death of the universe was going to come for it eventually. Milady. What's done is done. Good luck, hero. Enter the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase built from an unidentifiable and featureless material. The steps barely seem to fit together, and upon closer inspection, they barely seem to go anywhere at all let alone down. The air here has an almost artificial quality to it, the scent of plastic from the cabin mingling with a cocktail of chemical odours. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice carries up the stairs, its multi-tonal lilt adding to the already uneasy atmosphere. Hi, though. Is someone there? No. This isn't what I expected her to sound like. What is she? Well, she's not a princess, that's for sure. She is a princess. Don't let your imagination run wild. What the hell are you? We're a princess. But we can also be a friend. Smiley face. It takes you a moment to orient yourself before you're able to start moving forward. As you enter the next room, the form of the princess comes into view, her wrist bound to the far wall in heavy shackles. She locks eyes with you, one moving a little faster than the other, the loose skin of her face stretching into something resembling a smile. This is your fault, Contrarian. Holy shit. If we knew she'd be like this, maybe we wouldn't have tossed that knife out the window. No, I kind of still like that move. Why are you just, you just standing there? Are you scared of us? Of us? Uh, you look like you are the wrong side of a Mickey Mouse story. To be continued. Let's take the blade down with us. The door to the basement creaks open. Skip the that. Air, her voice. <sighs> this. Well, she. Hey, I think I'm here to kill you. No. You shouldn't do that. Why would you hurt us when we can just be friends? It takes you a moment to orient yourself before Skip you're able to start moving forward. As you enter the next room, she locks eyes with you. Holy sh! I don't know about you, but I'm sure that we took that knife with us. I can't believe someone suggested you toss it out the window. Can you imagine? Yeah, I can imagine. Why are you just, just standing there? Are you scared of all of us? Okay, so let's enter the basement of Violent Knife. The door to the base- Her voice. Hello? Is someone there? You sound normalish. It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Lie, I'm here to save you. 
I'm here to save you. How many times do I have to tell you how dangerous letting her out of here would be before it finally sinks in? Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? If you never saw the other routes. I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. Nope. Don't do it. If she gets out of those chains, we're all one step closer to the end. Hold on, let's talk a bit first. I'll see what I can do. Examine the chains. Okay. Anime. What's your name? Tree the Blade. Go back to upstairs for you to live on saying another word. Can't believe you've been keeping you down here like this. I'm getting you out of here. What's your name? Oh. She pauses, carefully formulating her words before she responds. You can address me as your royal highness. Or you can just call me princess if your royal highness is too formal. Is princess her name or her title? What if it's both? Could you imagine being named Princess Princess? Mario Mario. So is Princess your name? Like I said, you can call me Princess if you'd like. I'm sorry, I've been down here so long I guess I've just forgotten. I must have a name though. Everyone has a name. Okay, that's weird. She hadn't even thought to pick a name for herself. Hopefully, you're starting to see that she can't be trusted. Go back upstairs, get the blade, and slay her before it's too late. Okay, um, so since I've already went through a lot of these options in the original demo, uh, I'm not gonna necessarily go for all the filler. Although, it is good dialogue. Back when the full game is released, like, I, I will, will obviously go for all this to have a complete playthrough, though. Let's see. I can't believe they've been keeping you down here like this. I'm getting you out of here. Examine the chains. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy. Far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Nope. Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. If there's any key, you have any ideas? I'm going to check upstairs. Maybe the key's still lying around somewhere up there. If not, maybe I can at least find something to break you free. Okay. I'll be here. Good luck. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Return to the bottom of the stairs. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood what from a her wound smile. arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Approach the locked door. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No. I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. 
What are you doing? Um, narrator is taking over my hand. And I have to slay the princess. Title drop. Okay, there's no going back now. I'm with you to the end. You bring the blade down to strike at the princess's heart. But she's fast. CQC. She ducks to the floor, your blade narrowly grazing her backside. Slaying her won't be easy now that she's free. We could have gotten out of here together. Were you just lying to me this whole time? I don't know what's come over you. But if I have to kill you, then I'll kill you. Do you think I need both of my arms to do that? Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Do you see that razor sharpness in her gaze? I don't think she's bluffing. She pounces on you with the same animal ferocity she used to tear through her arm. But you have a weapon. You raise the blade, digging it under her ribs, aiming directly for the heart. It's not enough to stop her. You feel her claws in your throat, then her teeth, somehow sharp enough to pull apart your flesh and sinew with ease. You collapse to the floor, your body unresponsive as your blood pools on the ground beneath you. She stares down at your ravaged form, eyes shining in the darkness, dress stained in red as her blood and yours both seep into the fabric. I should have never took on a Lion King fan. If we're lucky, the wound you managed to inflict will be enough to at least delay her escape from this place. If we're very lucky, it will kill her before she can reach the outside world. It can't just end like this, right? As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 2 The Witch. I don't think I remember that one. Path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. But I already slew the princess. Sure she also killed me, but I definitely got her. Why am I here again? I can assure you that you didn't slay her, and that she didn't kill you. People don't just spring back to life after dying, and the two of us are meeting for the very first time. Narrator, stop gaslighting me. What happened, then? Maybe it's best to keep it that way. Brilliant. We need to keep our cards close to our chest, and I'm not sure we can trust him. So in this route, we're an opportunist. You know I can hear you. It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. Did I say I'm not sure we can trust him? <laughs> Slip of the tongue, bit of the old brain fog. I meant to say that we should probably head over to the cabin and slay that princess. We already know we can't trust her, so let's get on with the show. Proceeding to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Don't worry. You can trust us to get the job done. Proceeding to the cabin again. The interior okay, of the this cabin is, weird. is a mess of twisted roots. The walls a chaotic weave of knotted wood that, almost as if by accident, just happens to resemble a room. The floor is damp and earthy, and the only furniture of note is a slab of mud in the shape of a shelf, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. So this time we don't even have a table, it's just its just a slab of mud. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You seem to have a mirror on the wall. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's the muddy shelf, the blade sitting on the muddy shelf, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror, but he says there isn't one. That's got to count for something, right? I trust my eyes. Why would he lie about not being a mirror? What's the point? I want to see how handsome I am. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. Well, at least we can all agree now that there's nothing to see here. Case closed. Good work, everyone.
Take the blade. You take the blade from the shelf. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Well, if we're grabbing a weapon, we should probably keep it hidden behind our backs. She doesn't have to know we have it. That's not actually a bad idea. Into the basement. Can we sell this one? I, I really don't remember this route. I think this is new. Revealing a staircase dug into the muddy earth below. The ceiling is thick with roots that hang like locks of tangled hair. The weak starlight from the cabin windows behind you can barely penetrate the gloom here, only illuminating the edges of an opening below. It shines in the darkness like some kind of massive moor waiting to swallow you up into the earth. The air smells of dirt and copper. It's thick and wet, as if your lungs are being coated in mud with each intake of breath. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her voice skitters up from below. Something nasty finds itself on my stairs. Come on down, don't be scared. I probably won't bite. I like this princess. I'm not nasty. Hello. I recognize that voice as easily as I recognized your nervous little footsteps coming up the path. I know who you are. And I remember what you've done. She must have you confused with someone else. She seems friendly enough. Maybe we can talk our way out of this whole situation. <sighs> you can't. Unless you slay her right away, she's going to break free and end the world. There's no reasoning with what she is. Look, I'm just throwing ideas out there. I like to think out loud. I'm the kind of guy who likes a discussion. Don't we want to hear what everyone has to say before making any big decisions? Do you want to hear what everyone has to say? Or do you just want to hear yourself talk? You need to stop lingering. Your task is to slay the princess, Towel not drop. endlessly debate about what to do with the princess. This part is actually very important to me anyway. Fine, fine. You're the boss. I'm just saying, this game partially advertises itself as possibly a dating sim. It's not out of the picture. There might be a happy ending. At the end of all this, and the the full release. Thank you. Whoa! You have fire. The basement steps, entering the dark room below. And um, a tail. A fire crackles in the center of the room, casting unsettling shadows across the dirt walls. The princess crouches on the other side. And there you are, one hand tucked away behind your back, gripping that sharp, sharp blade, no doubt. That's no fair. How would she know that? So, we've dropped the pretenses. Good. The witch. I actually like this look on you. Could oh, be something about the blade. Hope you know what you're getting us into. It'll always be here if we need it. Sure, that was also true last time, and we still died, but we definitely know what we're doing this time. The door to the basement, the weak, the Skip air ahead. Something. I'm not nasty. But you are. You're a wretched little thing. I recognize that voice as easily as I recognized your nervous little footsteps coming up the path. I know who you are. And I remember what you've done. She must have you confused. Skip with ahead. Else. Might not make two too different. She's <sighs> look, do you fine? Fine. You're the boss. Thank a fire crackle. And there you are, once again seeming to offer a helping hand while likely hiding the other behind your back. Fine. I'll play along for now. What do you want? This is just the princess's scorned route. Witch. Warn the princess. Stop that. No. Something's come over you, hasn't it? Y you know you don't have to do this, right? I actually technically do, but I'm gonna try not to. Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! Resist. The blade! Move the blade! As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, 
the princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. What are you doing? Look at those big old eyes. I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. She plunges it into your chest, tearing through flesh and sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Whatever. She sinks the blade into your chest again and again and again, and you feel every inch of burning pain that slices its way into your body. Could you have done this quicker and less painful? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She doesn't know how to use a knife, does she? Apparently not. Though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? A stab wound is still a stab wound, and it won't be long before you bleed out. <laughs> I'm so sorry! With one last thrust of the knife, so it's pretty cute. your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? Yeah, it's ending like this. Oh, that's rich coming from you. Oh god, anime. As much as I prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of you made your choice. It's over. Everything goes dark. And you die. Chapter 2, The Damsel You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Let's see the unique option. Oh, you bastard, you're in for now. I'm wise to your trick. My tricks? What on earth are you talking about? We just met for the first time. Player. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Yes, he didn't approve of us last time, did he? If we're going to save our beloved, we'll have to be sneaky about it. So now we're the smitten. Our beloved? Yes, you'll have to be very sneaky about your intentions if you're going to try and save the princess. Ah, so all of the cards are on the table. Then you should know that we and the princess are in love, and the four of us will be foiling any and all assassination attempts you've got in the works. We sound like a very British version of Zap Brannigan from Futurama. We'll see about that. Whatever you do, just be sure to ignore him specifically. It sounds like he's the sort who'd sacrifice the whole world for a peck on the cheek. And I will. What can I say? A world without love is a world that isn't worth saving. Proceed to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We already told you we're not playing along with your little game. It's your lies that can't be trusted. Her beauty is the only thing in the world we can believe in. Voice of the simp. I think we've already been over this. I'm pretty sure he just likes the sound of his own voice. I do, but I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be expressed. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I was checking the response to the demo and like, a lot of people fell in love with her. Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. Proceeding to the cabin. The interior no, nice of the place. cabin is clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. That's because there isn't a mirror. 
there's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. I'm sure the princess would tell us there was a mirror if she were up here. In which case she'd be lying to you because, again, there isn't a mirror. How many times are we going to be gaslight about this damn mirror? I'll look at myself to see how handsome I am. That's a great idea. We have to make sure we're looking our best before we save her. We shouldn't waste time preening. If he is lying about the mirror, it might be important. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes, there is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see. Even the there. background music is more like... Pomp. This really isn't funny. Up you reach clean. forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. I still see a mirror there. But it was there a second ago. Now it's gone. Pity. We could have a feather out of place and now we'll never know. We can't gallantly sweep her off her feet if we have a feather out of place. Yes, yeah, so we have feathers. It's not like just a coat, it's like lily feathers. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. I suppose if we're to play the role of dashing knight, we need an equally dashing sword. That way she'll know we can defend her from her enemies. And we'll also need a dashing convertible to show her that we have money in a nice car. Hopefully it doesn't put her on edge. And hopefully it doesn't get turned on us. Again, there's no use arguing over motivations right now. It's good that you took the blade. You'll need it to do your job. Enter the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an intricate stairwell. Gold-trimmed carpet glimmers in the light of the torches positioned along the walls. The basement almost seems welcoming in the dim firelight, but it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. A soft voice carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It is I, your knight. I've come here to save you from the poor. I mean, save you. Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. I can hear wedding bells already. I've held my tongue till now, but you're taking this a little too far. We barely even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this over-the-top fawning. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just remember that her charms are all part of the manipulation. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall. My love, we're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. Wait, she she can hear us? Or at least the voice is spinning anyway. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. I was so worried about you. Y you remember me, right? Of course, my love. A damsel. Steal your nerves and step forward. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh? No talking then? Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She yeah, actually can do a lot. She's not bluffing. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Do you see the razor sharpness in her gaze? I don't think she's bluffing. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. Are you sure she's not armed? I'm on the blade. Slay the princess. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. Oh. This is it, isn't it? Yep. I'm almost embarrassed. 
I should have seen that coming. But I have to wonder, do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? There it is again. That razor-sharp look in her eyes and the terrifying conviction in her words. Yes. Even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago. That arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? Of course not. That's way too easy. It's over. Don't get all worked up. We should make sure. What's the harm in checking for a pulse? I really don't think you should do that. Oh, well, why? Because she's still alive, narrator? And why shouldn't we? Is there something you're not telling us? I've told you everything that's happened with complete accuracy. The princess is dead. Your blade pierced her heart. There's no coming back from that. Remove the blade. Check for a pulse. You're right, she's dead. Check for a pulse. You lean down and place your hand against her neck. Holding your breath as you search for a pulse. Even though you know you're not going to find one. We definitely won't if you keep talking. I'm sorry, do you want her to be alive? You just saved the entire world from annihilation. Why are you suddenly trying to call that into question? Hey, wait. wait. What was that? You know what that was. That was the sound of a heartbeat. Followed by another. A and another. I guess I won't be dying alone after all. Something sharp digs into your side, the shock of it sending your nerves into a pained frenzy. Quick, let's get out of here. We're dead. It's too late for that now. You collapse to the ground as the mortally wounded princess twists a blade of her own deeper between your ribs. As you fall, she falls with you, exhausted by the effort. The little life that was left in her eyes fading rapidly. An eye for an eye. A life for a life. I guess we're even now. I see your point. See you around. You were so close. Why did you hesitate? <sighs> it doesn't matter. At least you managed to take her with you, for whatever that's worth. Everything goes dark, and you die. Blarg. Chapter 2. The Razor. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. I'm positive. I'm not. But we'll keep our eyes peeled. If she has a weapon, she'll have to draw it before she can use it. Hesitating. Why don't you drop the knife and the two of us can be civilized with each other? Charge the princess, blade in hand, but unfortunately your earlier suspicions proved correct. A blade of her own slips down her sleeve and catches you in the neck. Blood sprays from the Damn. cut, your severed carotid artery painting the princess with strokes of red. You'd better finish your task quickly before you run out of time. <laughs> Just die. Lord. Are you serious? The wound in your neck is too much for you to bear, and you collapse to the floor of the basement, rapidly bleeding out. The princess stands over you with an intense curiosity as you fade away. Oops. Everything goes black, and you die. It said it also led to the same chapter, but it was like an alternate route we can get here. That was kind of interesting. With the last bit of your will, you press forward, sinking the blade deep into the princess's heart. Oh. There's a knife right there. The two of you collapse on the floor together, rapidly bleeding out. Somehow, I thought this would turn out a little differently. But I wonder, do you really think that this was enough to stop me? There it is again. That razor-sharp look in her eyes and the terrifying conviction in her words. But you don't have the time to worry over such things. Everything goes black, and you die. Yep, that also leads to the razor. Um, just proceed to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. 
don't believe a word she says. No. No, we can't go in there. Do either of you feel sick? Because I feel sick just thinking about that place. We're going to die again, and I bet it's going to hurt. It's good to be careful, but you're really not helping with all that talk about death and dying. I think the race is also a complete new route. Like, there, there is more routes now. Agreed. Just ignore that clown and stay focused. Seen to the cabin. The interior Whoa, of the cabin is you've been a jagged working mist, this place. warped wood and broken boards, their splintered edges as uninviting as shattered glass. The only furniture of note is a pointed table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. Can you two stop arguing? It's stressful enough in here without all of this noise. I guess we're flinching because we hesitated. Do, do you care about lo us looking handsome? I care less about that and more about whether we're being lied to. If he's willing to lie about something as innocuous as a mirror, what else is he hiding from us? I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes, there is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would it even do? Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago. And now it's gone. For the love of everything, can we just get this over with already? All this waiting is killing me. Um, she's gonna be killing you in a second. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Okay. Okay. Holding it... Holding it feels a little better. Maybe we can make it through this. Enter the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing what must once have been stairs. The fractured slats look as if they've been torn from their source and violently jammed into the wall. The air seeping up from below has an almost metallic quality to it, like the smell of fresh blood. And you can hear what sounds like the rhythmic scraping of metal coming from down below. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Scraping? She's not even trying to hide her knife. See, we're, we're so scared that hidden knife now. That sound could be anything. It's probably just her chains dragging across the floor. I am begging you to get out of your head. Her grating voice carries up the stairs. I hope you've come to rescue me. I've been stuck down here forever. It's all interesting of a voice. Is something wrong with that voice? I can hear her bloodlust. As you descend the floor, why is this step, like a giant hallway? The form of the princess comes into view, her sharp eyes following you from across the room. Finally, somebody, quick, get me out of these chains. We're not safe here. She looked kind of cute when she was waiting for me, though. Like, yeah, that's someone waiting for a date, right? We're not falling for it. Look at the She's smile. Would you trust that? Can't you I hear trust her that? threatening edge to her voice? She just wants us to get close, to let our guard down. Then it'll all happen again. If she sounds threatening, it's because her mask is already slipping. She knows why you're here. You are armed, after all. What are you waiting for? You are here to rescue me, right? Whoa! What? The Razor. It's like an X-Men character. Okay, so this is one of those ones that kind of branches off the main route. I'm gonna keep you locked away down here. At least for a little bit. You can get to know each other better while I decide what to do. Keep her locked away. Well, that seems like a pretty good compromise. I don't think I could bear being down here that much longer. Yes, you will. Leaving her alive is too risky. If you don't deal with her soon, she will find a way out. So I'm the only one who liked that idea. <sighs> one way or another, 
I'm going to find a way out of here. It would make it easier for both of us if you'd help. Nope. But if you don't, I can promise that you'll regret that decision. You have to make a choice. Let's hope for all our sakes, it's the right one. I like how she goes from like nice and all of a sudden like, I'm a goth. Lock her in the basement. I know you think this is some kind of fair compromise, but it isn't. No one wins here. It's a chance we'll have to take. We can make this work if we just stay here and keep watch. No one has to die. Where are you going? You can't just leave me here. Yes, I can. Bye. You turn your back to the princess and make your way back to the stairs. Fine. Turn your back on me. But it won't be long before I slip these chains. And once I'm out of here, there will be hell to pay for leaving me behind. Slip these chains? She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But do you hear the conviction in her voice? I don't think she's bluffing. Either way, she dropped the mask, didn't she? You can still grab the blade and get back down here. Nope, we're running away. It'll be the death of all of us, but fine. We'll do it your You close the basement door, locking it behind you and quickly barricading it with the heavy wooden table that once held the blade. Okay. We can make this work. Hey, where did the blade go? You settle in against the far wall to watch the basement door. It isn't long before you start to drift off, your eyelids heavy with fatigue. But sleep doesn't come. Instead, your rest is broken by a piercing, wailing voice calling out to you from the other side of the door. I know you're still there. Why don't you make things easier on yourself and let me out? It's not like this little door I'll hold for very long anyway. Um, it's probably a good idea to try to get back on my good side. She sounds terrified. Like she's less of a princess you saw and more like something out of a nightmare. As she violently rattles the door, you do your best to shut her out of your mind. When I get out of here, I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece. I won't forget what you did, and I'll never forgive it. If you get out. You don't know the kind of enemy you've made tonight. It doesn't sound like she's getting any weaker. No, it doesn't. That was just an act, wasn't it? You're not really innocent or harmless. You're not even a princess, you're a monster. I could be innocent and harmless, if I want to be. Teasing me with fresh air and a chance to fire me live freely doesn't inspire me to play nice. You put the princess's threats out of your mind as best you can and huddle up against the wall. You jolt awake in the middle of the night to silence in the cabin. The ruckus has stopped, and the door to the basement is ajar. It's lock broken, and the table shoved out of the way. Where is she? Thanks for right helping me get out of that awful basement. You try and stumble to your feet, but as the princess draws near, it's as though your body simply stops working. It isn't all at once. The paralysis comes in waves. First your toes go numb, and then your feet, and then your legs. You lie prone on the floor of the cabin, unable to do anything but witness her approach. Whose side are you on? Yours, of course. But I have a duty to uphold the truth. Lying about the facts of the situation doesn't change them. You mean like I lied about the mirror? Every time? So helpless. I can take my time with you, can't I? She steps closer. One silent footfall at a time, cocking her head in curiosity as you feel your organs shutting down one by one. Or maybe I can't take my time with you. You don't look well. A little green around the gills. Yeah, see, there's the gills thing. What a shame. If you'd only help me get out of here, we could have done such wonderful things together. Your lungs stop drawing in breath, and your heart freezes in your chest. You have seconds left. I'd say better luck next time, but we both know this is the end, don't we? It can't be. 
This can't actually be how everything ends. I'm sorry, but it is. Thanks, narrator. Everything goes dark, and you die. Why can you narrate me a machine gun? Chapter 2. The Nightmare You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Um, we'll just go straight to the cabin. These are all pretty much the same dialogues that we've been hitting. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. I don't think lying and cheating is a thing. She was very direct with us last time. Or at least she was direct with us after we decided to lock her away. It doesn't matter. Don't trust anyone. So this is the paranoid route. Proceeding to the cabin. The interior of the cabin is plain, the smooth wood of the walls almost featureless. The only furniture of note is a lone table, knocked on its side in the corner of the room. A pristine blade stands between you and the open, inviting basement doorway. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Hold on. What happened to the door? There is no door. It's just an empty frame. She's already got now, hasn't she? And she's ready for us. She's been waiting. Can't you feel her eyes on us? I'm going to need all of you to pull yourselves together. The princess has not already gotten out. But if you keep getting stuck in your head like this, you're going to struggle to get the job done. You see how the nature of the perception changed the door? Also, there's a thing over here. I just realized there's eyes looking at me. So deep breath in, deep breath out. Your task awaits, and only you can do it. The end of the game, it's gonna be all like a twist. It's gonna be like, this was just basically a bunch of people role-playing in their basement. It's just like a DM session. You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. You're right. I was so stuck on the eyes watching us that I didn't even notice it there. What are you two talking about? There isn't a mirror. There's a table, the blade sitting on the floor, and the open doorway leading to the basement. There's nothing else in here. You see, I like the nice detail where it's like, the narrator, it's just not the same dialogue. Like, the narrator actually does change it for the subtle things. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. We have to look at it. Unless that's what he wants us to do. And pretending it isn't there is a trick to get us to do exactly what he wants. Oh, look at how handsome I am. We shouldn't waste time preening. If he is, I'm not lying to you. Use your... Same. Maybe he's trying to keep us yeah. from looking because there's something horribly wrong with us. This is the interesting one. No, there isn't something horribly wrong with you. You look exactly how you're supposed to look. Now stop second-guessing my every word. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the empty basement door frame. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Let the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. Did he make it go away? Clearly there was something in there worth investigating if he wants it hidden so bad. Take the blade. You reach down and pick the blade up off the floor. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good. Steel can't lie to us. But it can steal from us. Is it gonna be enough, though? Couldn't you have given us something else? Something... I don't know. Better than a knife? Could we have a bomb? See, you see how the hero picked up on the thing about, like, give us a machine gun? The blade is the only thing you need to finish your task. You're more than capable of pulling this off, so long as you don't lose faith in yourself. Those are the words of someone who knows he's sending us to our death. Into the basement. 
Whoa. You cross over the threshold and onto a series of isolated steps suspended in darkness. More eyes, too. You never mention the eyes. The air seeping up from below reminds you of fresh lightning and static, as if you're descending into a place that isn't meant for a creature of flesh and blood. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her cruel and playful voice prances up the stairs. I didn't think you'd come back. We're gonna have a lot of fun, you and I. Come back? She must have you confused with someone else. Come on, you can just drop the act. You really don't remember, do you? It doesn't matter, we need a game plan. We know we can't just go down there unprepared. Explore, how hard is it to throw a knife? I'm gonna to talk to her. We don't need a plan, I'm just gonna kill her. Mr. Nero seems to think I can do it. I don't know why you're all being such pessimists right now. Step off into the void between the stairs. Get you on the stairs in silence. It can't be that hard. Just throw the knife then down we there. Our weapon. We'd have to make it count. Otherwise she'd be furious and we'd be defenseless. If a knife is even enough to do anything against something like her in the first place, it'll be enough. I'm gonna to talk to her. Didn't you hear my warning a minute ago? She can't be trusted. Talking won't do you any good. Something tells me she isn't gonna be very keen on talking anyway. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. Let me quick load that. Um, step off into the void between the stairs. I'm actually kind of curious about this one. You attempt to step off the stairs and into the pitch black surrounding them, but you're stopped by an invisible force. Why did you do that? What did you think would happen? That I fall into the void? I was curious. I don't know, falling into infinite voids seemed better than going downstairs and dying. I'm just scared. How would falling into an infinite void be better than anything? It's peaceful. No taxes. It's a void <sighs> taxes. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. As you emerge, you find yourself between two loose rows of white wooden planks suspended in nothingness. A smattering of cobblestones, visible against the inky black of the basement, mark where the floor should be, forming vague pathways. At what seems to be the end of the room, they diverge in opposite directions, left and right. She could be anywhere, and there's nowhere for us to hide. We're completely exposed. Are you really not going to comment on how weird this place is? No, I'm not. Somebody needs to be the voice of reason here, and it certainly isn't you. Excuse me, I'm being incredibly reasonable. You're the one who's just matter-of-factly describing whatever the hell we're looking at like it's an ordinary basement. We're going to die down here. I don't want to die again. Please stop saying that. You're only going to make things worse. Just pick a direction and start moving. I wouldn't give it too much thought if I were you. It doesn't really matter. Because either way you go, I'm going to find you. They really changed this route. Like, a lot. This is, this was just like a quick thing, like a quick scare before. And just she comes up, oh, scary. Go back the way you came. You turn back to the stairs, only to find that they aren't there. A faintly outlined path lies before you. There you are. I told you I was going to find you. No. As the princess approaches, your legs suddenly go numb. Quick, go right. Reload. Go right. You turn to the right. A faintly outlined path lies before you. This is exactly the same. There you are. I told you I was going to find you. As the princess approaches, your legs suddenly go numb. Your arms quickly follow. This is it, isn't it? And you brought a little knife with you. Cute. There has to be a way out of this. Think. What did you do? Pull yourself together. She isn't supposed to be like this. I wonder how many times I'll get to play with you before you break. Once. The nightmare. This is like Metal Gear Solid intros, right? Where they introduce like the the boss, the fury, the taxes. Oh, we should have taken the knife. I don't think going down there unarmed is going to do us any favors. You cross over the threshold. More eyes too. You never mentioned the eye. 
How hard is it to throw a knife? You're joking, right? You didn't even bring the knife. That's what you think. Should we go back for it? Can we even go back for it? You briefly turn back. Where there once was an entrance to the cabin, now there are only more stairs. Hmm. That's not right. You think? I guess the only way out of this place is through it. You decide it's best to do nothing. There you are. I told you I was going to find you. As the princess approaches, your legs suddenly go numb. Your arms quickly follow. This is it, isn't it? It's almost like you want me to get you. M m maybe? There has to be a way out of this. Think. Think! What did you do? Pull yourself together. She isn't supposed to be like this. I wonder how many times I'll get to play with you before you break. Go get the plane. Thank you. You turn back to- Where are you going? You can't just leave me here. You'd better hope for your own sake that I don't slip these chains before you make it back down here. Slip these chains? She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But she has to be bluffing, but I'd hurry if I were you. You rush up to the first floor, grabbing the blade, both yours and the world's only possible salvation. Okay. If we're sure about this decision, I'll support it. I suppose we have a world to save, after all. You slowly creep down the basement stairs. It's quiet. It's a little different. Where the princess sat only a moment ago, there's only a severed arm, its cooling flesh still chained to the wall, and she is nowhere to be seen. Is it just me, or did this room get a lot bigger? Let's finish this. Your eyes dart to the corners of the room. You don't see her. Where is she? Investigate the arm. As you step towards the severed limb, you hear the pattering of feet behind you, soft against the basement floor, then loud and desperate against the stairs. You turn to chase after the princess, but she's fast and has too much of a lead. She slams the door behind her before you can make it to the top of the stairs. The lock clicks into place. No! Thanks for letting me out. I'd return the favor, but I think we both know that I can't trust you to let me stay free. With those parting words, the princess walks away, her quiet footsteps eventually fading as she leaves you and the cabin to rot. You're stuck here. Alone. I don't remember where this led. It can't just end like this, right? As much as I prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. I'm sorry, but it's over. You don't know how much time passes before the end, but eventually it comes. The world ends, and you end with it. It leads to the witch. That's an alternate route to the witch. So, in this route, it's this is basically a you just kind of go down here, you know, without a knife. So we're gonna slay her. Hesitation, bring the blade down and plunge it into the princess's back. Finally. The wound drives her to the ground. Okay. There's no going back now. I'm with you to the end. And this is when you're literally backstabbing her. Like she doesn't see it coming. You bastard. Were you lying to me this whole time? The princess pushes away from you, the motion ripping the blade from her back. Wounded, but still alive, she crouches on all fours in the corner of the room and meets your eyes with the ferocity of a cornered predator. You've made a terrible enemy, and there's nothing in the world that can possibly save you from me. Oh, trust me, I know that. Do you hear the conviction in her voice? Do you see that razor sharpness in her gaze? I don't think she's bluffing. I thought we had the upper hand, but it's as if she's barely even threatened by us an act. She's wounded and unarmed. There's nothing she can do to hurt you. I'm not so sure. Don't waver now. 
as you ready your blades to deliver a lethal blow, she lunges at your legs with the same animal ferocity she used to tear at her arm. Your knife cuts into her again and again as you're tackled to the ground, your body racked with pain as she rips into you with tooth and claw. You know, also, I think in some routes, she just basically CQCs you, but here, like, she's literally gained fangs and claws. Forget about trying to rescue her. This is about survival now. Give her everything you've got. Slay the princess. Though your nerves are seizing with pain, you know you've done your fair share of damage as well, your blade having left deep gashes in the princess's back. You seize a moment of hesitation to throw her off of you and shakily push yourself back to your knees. We can still turn this around. Give up. Are you serious? As what's left of your blood pools around you on the cobblestone floor, the blade falls from your trembling hands and clatters uselessly against the ground. I suppose you simply lacked the will to finish the job. The princess, wounded but still alive, nervously jumps at the blade and kicks it far away from you before retreating into a dark corner of the room. Her shining eyes watch you from the darkness, unblinking and curious as you bleed out. We can only hope the wounds you managed to inflict will be enough to at least delay her escape from this place. If we're very lucky, they'll kill her before she can reach the outside world. Yeah, that ain't happening. After all this time alone, I thought I'd finally found a friend, but you were just another monster, weren't you? Supposedly we look like a monster too, remember my theory? That that's how she perceives us? This is the end, isn't it? Before you can answer, everything goes black, and you die. Chapter 2, The Beast You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. Proceed to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Does a cat lie to a cornered mouse when it plays with its freedom? Or is it just acting out its nature? So in this round, we're the hunted. I don't see why that matters. A lie's a lie, and if anything, she's the one who's cornered. She could have gotten out of there whenever she wanted to. We should trust nothing that she tells us, only what we hear and smell. Because we're a mouse. Ho <laughs> ho! That's a very roundabout way of saying that you should listen to me and take this seriously. Maybe. Proceed to the cabin. The interior of the cabin is ruinous and dilapidated. It feels like no one has lived here for a long time, wind rushing in through cracks and holes in the wooden walls. The only furniture of note is a termite-eaten table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Do you say anything about the mirror on the wall? That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. What a strange thing to lie about. Maybe he doesn't see it. Why would you lie about that? What's the point? Exactly. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago, and now it's gone. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Enter the basement. The door to the basement. Oh, you've come a cave, haven't you? Feeling what's left of an old wooden staircase. 
It's still sturdy enough that you can make your way down in one piece, though you'll have to be mindful of holes. The air seeping up from below is oddly warm and wet, as if you're descending into a jungle. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. She growls up the stairs. I can smell you. And I smell good, right? She sounds almost... feral. Impatient. Or maybe... eager. You carefully make your way down the stairs. The last step gives way to the this place became a jungle. floor of a starlit pit. The walls are obscured by an impenetrable darkness, giving the illusion that the room might stretch on forever. You brush against the wide leaves of plants that surround you on all sides, seemingly the only living things that occupy this strange underground wilderness. The jungle is pressing in on us, hiding her from view. She could be anywhere. Like Jumanji up in here. A chain rattles in the underbrush, and as its links drag across the floor, you see pieces of her move in and out of the shadows. Remember, she's just a princess. She is certainly not just a princess. You're not helping. It doesn't matter what she is. It only matters what she does. She emerges, her shining eyes and glistening claws visible in the gloom, staring hungrily at you from the darkness. I can hear your heart pounding from the bottom of the stairs, fledgling. You're right to be terrified. I'm so much more than you. And a little splinter clutched in trembling hands won't save you from me. The beast. Notice we only even get to see her full body in this one. She is completely obscured. Then I'm not talking to you. Squid the princess while holding onto the blade. You stare at the princess, squinting. She squints back. Yeah, that's right. The two of you are going to do this forever, aren't you? Brunette squint. Squint. The princess even harder. You squint even harder. So does she. At least nobody's dying right now. You're going to have to make a choice. You can't keep squinting forever. Eventually, someone is going to have to blink. Slay the princess. Doubt, unfortunately, clouds your thoughts as you attempt to run her through. A moment of distraction and hesitation is all she needed to sidestep your thrust and deliver a catastrophic blow to your jaw. It feels like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. You can feel bone grinding on bone where your jaw has been fractured. Holy shit, that hurts! Yeah, it's a princess, are pretty strong. Though she's unarmed, the shock of that first strike is enough to stack you, putting you and the princess on somewhat equal footing. Your blade slashes through the air again and again, and her fists connect with your body as many times or more, each impact as heavy as that first bone-crushing hit. We can still turn this around. Finish the job. You and the princess stare at each other, both gasping for breath, equally exhausted. You probably won't make it out of here alive, but you can at least make sure that she won't make it out of here, either. Excuse me? Do you think this is what I wanted to happen? I have a duty to state the facts of the situation, and honestly, it's a miracle anyone is still standing right now. Can you not feel all those ruptured organs bouncing around in there? If the princess doesn't do our friend in herself, internal bleeding is certain to finish the job. The two of you clash for the final time. You feel your ribs break as she delivers a heavy blow, but you push through the pain falling forward and sinking your blade deep into the princess's heart. You gotta give her credit, man. She doesn't even, she's not even armed. Well, she is armed. She's got two guns right there. Oh. The two of you fall to the floor. Double KO. This was fun. The princess gasps. Her voice an unhealthy rasp as her lungs start to fill with blood. You put up more of a fight than I thought you would. But I have to wonder, do you really think this is the end? There it is again. That razor-sharp look in her eyes and the terrifying conviction in her words. But you don't have the time to worry over such things. Everything goes black. And you die. Blarg. Chapter 2. The Adversary. 
you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. A warning before you go any further. Yeah. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. She'll also beat the hell out of me. Lying and cheating doesn't sound like her at all. Not that it matters. It's not like she can lie or cheat in the middle of a fight. Are you sure about that? The point of my warning wasn't to start an argument over what circumstances the princess is capable of lying in. It was to give you some broadly applicable advice. The princess will do and say whatever she thinks it will take to get her out of there. So don't trust her. Ever. Are we clear? Crystal. Let's just get on with it already. Get on with it. See you into the cabin. The cabin is tighter than its exterior would suggest. Yes, yeah, so I'll turn to stone. Cold stone walls press in on you, as if trying to forcefully direct you towards your destination. The only furniture of note is a black iron altar with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You didn't say about the mirror on the wall. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's the altar, the blade sitting on the altar, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. Hear the music. See like the subtle changes in the music whenever you get for these things? There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. Oh, stop bickering and just get on with it. Who even cares if there's a mirror? You're right, it doesn't matter. I want to see how handsome I am. I care less about that and more about whether we're being lied to. If he's willing to lie about something as innocuous as a mirror, what else is he hiding from us? I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes, there is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would it even do? Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. You know, if it's a cabin, usually that implies it's me and I would. But it was there a second ago, and now it's gone. So all of us can stop arguing about it and get to fighting. All right, Russell Crowe. Take the blade. You take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Into the basement. Actually, let me reload this real quick. Into the basement. A knife this time. Right then, fisticuffs it is. Probably more fair to her anyway. Wouldn't want to feel like we cheated our way to a win. Notice the voice of the stubborn doesn't commentate on the blade, but not taking it, they commentate on it. As long as you can still get the job done. And don't forget that the blade is waiting for you upstairs if you happen to change your mind. Like, we're ready to go. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a rough stone staircase, its walls pressing at your sides and tightening as you descend. The air seeping from below is heavy and oppressive, with an almost sulfuric odour to it. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favour. Her fierce voice carries up the stairs. Is that another challenger? Finally! It's been ages since I've had a good fight. This isn't what she sounded like last time. Her voice is a little deeper, almost threatening. Good. Sounds like my kind of princess. I agree there, mate. As much as I appreciate the enthusiasm, just make sure you don't let your bloodlust get to your head. You need to stay focused and keep your wits about you. Remember, you're here to slay the princess, not to have a good fight. No, we're down here to have a good fight. So the way you will pick out a good woman. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A large shackle leading from her wrist to the basement wall. I feel like this princess is an upgrade in all ways. I'm not sure about you. Maybe not the hooves. We, we can lose the hooves, but... Looks like she could rip those chains out of the wall without a second thought. Oh, it's you again. I've been hoping you'd find your way back here. 
Good to see that death doesn't stick for either of us. But no little knife this time, huh? No. I hope you're not just here to chat. I've been itching for a rematch. Working on my gains. The adversary. We won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I just can't let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait. This isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. Warner. Stop that. I thought this was a little too easy. Your body lunges forward. Now oh, the uh, narration got interrupted. Stop it. Stop resisting me. I am trying to get you out of here alive. Resist. The blade. Move. The. Blade. You're doing your best to help me, aren't you? I can see the conflict in your eyes. I'll make this quick. She has pretty eyes in all of her routes. She steps forward and pries the blade from your rigid hands. It, it's the stare. Maybe I'll see you in another life. Yeah, see ya. And then she slits your throat with an almost clinical ease. Her face remains unchanged as she watches you collapse to the ground, blood flowing from your butchered neck. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. I hope it was worth it. Chapter 2. The Prisoner You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Proceed to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Yes, yes, don't believe a word she says. Just go in, take the knife, and do what you're supposed to. Wink. Wink. Did you just say wink out loud? No, I didn't. Wink. Wonk. Just ignore this clown and focus on the princess. Proceed to the cabin. The interior of the cabin is less a cosy woodland retreat and more like a dungeon. A few pathetic wisps of starlight attempt to illuminate the cold, uninviting stone walls, and thick, wrought iron bars barricade the windows, reminding anyone who enters that this is a prison. The only furniture of note is an iron table, bolted to the floor, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. A lot of stone here again. He did say anything with the mirror on the wall. He definitely did not. Does a mirror not count as furniture of note to you? Because it should. There isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. I think you know what we have to do. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago, and now it's gone. If he doesn't want us to know about it, it must be important. We should keep our eyes peeled. Maybe it'll be back. So this is a skeptic route because we know the narrator will betray us. But we're a little more jaded than some of the other routes in that route because this one we did bring the knife with us. Take the nut blade. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good idea. Much better to be armed than to go in with blind hope alone. 
into the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an old stone staircase. A few sputtering torches attempt to vaguely illuminate your path, dancing across glimmering patches of slimy moss on the stone steps. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. You always like slaying that, don't you? Her voice, harsh but controlled, carries up the stairs. Is that a visitor I hear? Please, come downstairs. It's been a while since I've had company. I wonder what visitors she could be referring to. Are we not the first? You walk down the stairs and lock eyes oh, with the oh, princess. Oh, they really don't want you escaping. She looks up at you, the heavy collar around her neck clanking loudly as she moves, the chains binding both her wrists to the far wall, joining the metallic chorus as she adjusts her hands in her lap. Should we be worried about the one around her neck? Why would you be worried about her restraints? If anything, they'll make your job easier. And this is what the narrator really wants you like to, to kill her. He's just like, all right, three chains, no way she's getting out. Do it. Have you noticed the empty chain on the wall? Odd that in a place where everything seems to serve a distinct purpose, there would be something so obviously useless. What an interesting development. Why don't you have a seat? The two of us should chat before you bury that thing in my heart. The prisoner. You know, even your crown has, like, chains. Enter the basement. What an interesting development. Why don't you have a seat? I'm sure the two of us have quite a bit to talk about. I guess the branches of the ending within the, the branches are gonna have to really do if you bring that knife again or not. To be continued. Of course it is, she's dead. Yes, exactly. It's over. With your work done, you make your way back up the stairs closing the door to the basement behind you. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? You mean killing the princess? You did kill someone. Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. It's interesting how this route now branches a bit. This can go into the witch's route now if you like think like, oh, she's still alive. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. Leave. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only, a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of space. What? happened. Everyone is fine. It's just that you and the cabin are now far away from them. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. This sucks. I was kind of hoping to get a better ending for saving the world. This isn't an ending. In fact, now that the princess has been slain, endings are a thing of the past. No. This is the beginning of of eternity. Your reward. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. Time passes. You can't be sure if it's days or months or years or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Psst. Hey, we're not just gonna stay here forever, right? Maybe. Explore. Didn't you hear the narrator? I'm happy. We're happy. Are we really happy? Or is he just telling us that we are? No, we're happy. I'm sure of it. Really? Well, if you ever change your mind, just let me know, I guess. More happy time passes, though the word begins to lose its meaning. Time, that is. Not happy. Happy still has plenty of meaning. Please, shake yourself out of it. We have to get out of here. The little voices, please, fall on deaf ears. Eventually, you pass into a blissful state of pure existence. Though words like eventually and pass ceased to have any meaning to you long before that shift, you simply exist. Happy. Forever. 
Good inning. You did it. You saved the world. We ran our budget. To be continued. Hell no. Do you have any idea how to get us heck out of here? I do. But you're probably not going to like it. The blade. We can use the blade to get out of this. I can hear everything you say, little voice. There's only one thing it would want you to use that blade on. And I'm afraid that thing is you, dear hero. He's right. It's the only way out. Do you hear that? It wants to take this happiness away from you. It wants this wonderful place to end. Do you not? There's more for us to do. And the only way for us to do it is to take that blade and use it. Don't you dare. Listen. I'm going to point something out to you. But we're leaving. Anything to get out of the cell. Thank you. I made this happy little place for you. Is this not a good enough reward for saving the world? An eternity of bliss? You... you... ingrate. You should have given me money. Fine. Whatever. For the first time since time stopped meaning anything, you throw open the door to the basement and walk down the stairs. The princess's body is dust and bones, though the blade you used to slay her is still as pristine as the day you first held it. You pick up the blade, you stab yourself, and you die. The Larg. End. Nice knowing you. Chapter 2. The Spectre. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I kill myself, what am I doing here? I can assure you that you're not dead. And to answer your second question, you're here to slay the princess. I literally told you that a second ago. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. That's fine. It wasn't very hard to kill her last time. We'll just do it again. Voice of the cold. Well, if for whatever reason you're going to insist that this has happened before, at least your heart's in the right place. So this time we we're cold because we were basically just a cold-blooded killer. Like, we didn't hesitate, we didn't do anything, we just... Whoop, done, I'm out of here. See to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. She won't be a problem. Proceeding to the cabin. The interior of the cabin is cold, a soft odor of dirt permeating the air. Cobwebs flutter in the corners. You can hear wind whistling outside, banging the shutters against the windows. The only furniture of note is an elegant antique table with a pristine blade perched on the edge. It feels like I hear like a faint piano or something. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. It feels like no one's been here for a long, long time. Like I've been saying, she's dead. We killed her already. You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. Who cares if there's a mirror? Let's just go into the basement and find her body so we can be done with this. You're right, it doesn't matter. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago, and now it's gone. Let's not spend much longer worrying over it. Clearly, it's not even important enough to be acknowledged. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Enter the basement.
The door to the basement groans open, revealing an old banister and a creaky wooden stairwell. Everything is coated in a thick layer of dust, and you can feel it settle into your lungs as you breathe in the stale air. The very building itself feels dead. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. The room below is silent. Nobody's here. Naturally. As much as I appreciate the optimism, you shouldn't be so sure. I guess we'll just have to go down and see. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body lying in a heap on the floor, its wrist still bound to the wall by a thick chain. It's also in the wrong position now. Okay. She's definitely dead. It's just like I told you. Before you have a chance to finish your thought, the top of a head appears from underneath the floor. Two deep-set eyes stare up at you, followed by a mischievous, skeletal grin. She looks kind of cute like that. Like a... Tim Burden kind of thing. And finally, the rest of the body floats up to join the head. Wait, this isn't right. What's going on here? Oh, don't worry about the narrator. That's just my ghost girlfriend. A g g g ghost Whoa! Oh. Wow. How absolutely terrifying. What's a ghost supposed to do to us? Oh, it's you. Hiya, Keller. I was hoping to see you again. I have some issues with how our last meeting went. Like how you murdered me? Yeah, that was awkward, huh? Let's queued up close. Just, uh, it's, it's all right, I guess. To be continued. So that's it for the new Slay the Princess demo. So the big changes, if you didn't notice, I feel like pretty obvious, was the uh, chapter twos are all completely different. I mean, there is sub skeletons of the same thing there, but the the cabins themselves are different. Some of the routes they got a little more fleshed out art and design. And we have completely new routes um, because there was basically room for more branches for what to kind of paraphrase what the developer kind of told me. So it means like more of your choices matter now in that beginning chapter. So the original one had about six routes. We've gained at least four more, which I think is the tower, the razor, the witch, and then the prisoner. I think those are all the new ones. And I think aside from the Nightmare and maybe the Damsel, it looks like everyone, all the forms got completely new art. Um, I ever didn't have art before that was any detailed, and they, they got it now. Uh, in some cases, like the Beast, almost like a complete redesign. Or at least a more subtle introduction. The Stranger is pretty different too, but the Stranger I think is going to be in a weird route altogether. So there's going to be no consistency to like that form. And it looks like New voice acting, so like some of the forms have more defined, different, slightly different tones. And the events that actually happen in the cabin with the knife looks like it's a little bit different. Overall, I, I think it is an improvement. I, I do like we went deeper into the themage of each cabin changing based on our perception. It's just a matter of like, we still went in on that full game. So I feel like this could be, this one's going to take a while for them to probably get done. Because it is a fairly ambitious project on scale. Because you you got to over two hour long demo alone and they do promise that the full game is going to be hours longer because you have all these different routes and outcomes and that's a lot of writing fury story wise i haven't changed too much like i said uh I, I think we're somewhat based on perception along with the princess i noticed in the title screen there was like a vhs kind of tape adjustment effect going on at some point which is a little curious because the whole game is you know it's, it's like a corruption of a story and the, the nature of telling a story because once the story is over you know it's that's it you're just the, the story ends it stops where it started right to that point i i wonder if the full game will even have a, a traditionally happy ending like you may have a happy ending and then it cuts off and it's like next route you're, you're still technically under the the slavery of being in a story kind of thing but yeah it's one of the more promising adventure game kind of horror visual novels i think is coming out there I still have to play their other game that has multiple chapters. I think it's called Scarlet Hollow. That's got a couple of these days, guaranteed. 
but yeah. Anyway. So thank you all for watching Play Slay the Princess again. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.